Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to, to be here. I'm very happy to hear a lot more about this fancy new satellites we have in orbit. And being the mission manager of SWARP, coming from ESA, I'm also very much looking forward to how we can work together to really enhance both these missions together. So I will say a few words, and that works. Just a reminder, we have seen many pretty pictures of MSS-1. Uh, I want to show you some pretty pictures of Swarm also. As a reminder, <clears throat> we look rather similar to the A satellite. Uh, it's a body and a boom. Uh, and we have indicated on this slide also the, the, the instruments that we have on board. I normally classify science instrument and housekeeping instruments on Swarm. And you see we have two orange ones. They were launched uh, as auxiliary data. They are now used for science together with the science instruments. We are very close to releasing now a particle product from the star tracker, and then we then that will also become red. So it's just a reminder that it's uh, we have the, the magnetic uh, two magnetic instruments on the boom, and uh, in a similar manner as we have seen before. What is the status of the swarm mission? Overall, I would say the swarm mission is in excellent health. Uh, clearly, we have been almost 10 years in orbit. End of next month, we have been 10 years in orbit. It's a four-year mission, so we are doing exceptionally well. There is a, a few signs of aging, nothing that's mission critical, nowhere close to mission critical. Some of our products are getting better because we are learning along the way. So if this health continues, if consumables, meaning uh, continues to, to be available, my intention is to fly swarm through this solar cycle. Uh, and, and deorbit the lower pier in 2031-ish time frame when the sun is quiet and we can be close to Earth and do a proper uh, lithospheric field measurement. That's the intention. But the reality right now, we are funded through 2025, and every three years we have to ask for three more years. And, it's a, and then there is a review both of the science, the technical feasibility, and the biggest killer always funding. So, so we are through 25, I will ask for a new extension through 28, and then again, one through 31. And when we get there, let's see what the world looks like in the magnetic world in space look like. So that's a little bit of the programmatics. Where is warm? <laughs> and it's relevant in this, uh, this thing. I, I've seen the orbits of MSS-1, and it's rough up there these days. <laughs> the sun is extremely active. And, and if you remember Swarm, we have two flat satellites side by side, Alpha and Charlie. They are red and blue on this curve. The red is hidden behind the blue, except really, really early in the mission before the nominal mission. Bravo, the lonely spacecraft is green. And you can see since 2014, they have slowly been falling towards Earth and suddenly 2022, they just took a nose dive. So we have done two orbit races on the lower pair, Alpha and Charlie, otherwise they would re-enter very soon. Uh, and also right now we are racing Bravo. Uh, both to keep it in orbit, but also to ensure that it's actually separated from the lower pair and that they are not all three flying flying together. So with this, we are uh, we, we are uh, placing the satellites. If the sun does not go totally crazy this solar cycle, uh, it's feasible to get to next solar minimum. Uh, and from now on, the lower pair will only gently, hopefully, uh, fall back to Earth from from where they are where they are now. So that is a little bit where we are. Uh, but another way to see where is warm is also to look at the precise orbit and how they are uh, how, how they are orbiting in uh, in the fixed Earth frame and the sun fixed frame. And we know that this is this is a plot that I took from Nils a while back, 2018. This is shows where Alpha is 1st of August 2018. To the left, you see the different orbits in the Earth fixed frame. To the right, you see the local time it's covering in the sun fixed frame for that day. If you allow 11 days integration of the same satellite, you can see that the orbits pattern on the Earth fixed frame is getting larger, but now we are starting to covering a little bit more of local times with this one satellite. Clearly for Swarm, we also have Bravo in a different orbit, so we are doing a little better with the constellation, but Swarm alone is not optimize to cover local times fast. This is not the superpower of Swarm. So it would be nice to have someone who could do that better around to help us and hence collaboration. So this also looks a little bit of Swarm. And now it shows the orbit evolution from 22 to 25. The lower pair is blue because they fly together. Bravo is red. And we can see that right now they are rather close. Uh, they were co-aligned in 2021 or counter rotating. Uh, and now they are spreading out again, covering more local times. But it takes a while. It takes takes months to 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 go through. 
This I also took from NILS, um, and now we add MSS1 to the coverage. And we are seeing the red and the blue are the same as before. It's the lower pair and Bravo, but then MSS1 in this very different orbit are in terms of the local time coverage here, really painting the world in a different way. And this will show us more later on really what this means and what opportunity we get with having all these spacecraft co-aligned or having Swarm and MSS1 very close together and what opportunities that can give to the science uh, community. So clearly seeing what where we are flying uh, and seeing also the performance of MSS1, I mean, I'm not going to tell you the performance of Swarm. It's been, we, we have worked on that for a long time. Uh, it really looks like we, we have to take advantage of, of these two missions flying at the same time. So, you know, I want to fly to 25. I cannot guarantee anything beyond that, and, but, but I, we will. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Swarm family and friends. Um, so for Swarm, we are collaborating with many, and some of you might know that we are using platform magnetometers from many, many missions uh, that we are intercalibrating and using. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that now but we have specific good collaboration with, with some missions. We adopted the Canadian mission, uh, EPOP, the named it Swarm Echo, because it ran out of funding. Uh, and by doing that, we saved that we had another mission to the big Swarm constellation. And we also spend a lot of time on making sure that the data and data formats start looking similar to make it easier for users to utilize data from this fourth spacecraft in the Swarm, in the swarm family. Uh, we have collaboration with CSAS. Uh, it's been it's been very very good, uh, and some of the data from CSAS we are actually distributing in a swarm like format through the swarm distribution services to the mission user community in Swarm. And this has also been very very valuable for us. So there are there are different ways to do that. We did the same for CSAS and therefore for EPOP. We are also distributing that data in a swarm like format through the swarm distribution um, service. And now we have MSS1, of course, that's recently launched and they recently are here. And clearly, I would like to really talk about this data access and exploitation. This is just an attempt on the one slide summary of Swarm. Uh, data is there, it's really available. Uh, you can downlink it, download it from, from the, the, the thing there. But data is not all, this is 2023. Some people love to go to an FTP server, download the data and do things. But we can also exploit the data in a much easier way. And we are building up also an infrastructure of, of services around Swarm, uh, where people can display, manipulate, and also do quite a lot on the data. And I think this is something to think about in the collaboration also, not just exchange data files, but be sure that the services, not just the Swarm related ones, but other known international service can access the data in a good way to really let the MSS data live together in this international community of, of data products. So this is with MSS data access and exploitation. And also since we, some of us in the room, quite a few just came from Italy. We have had a three day Swarm data quality workshop. Swarm has been in orbit for 10 years almost. We are still working on improving the data quality. That job is never done. So even at commissioning, you have products that hopefully are, are good. They can always be better. And, and this is this I'm talking <laughs> from experience. So in order to ensure that you all the time constantly are making sure we are improving our data, uh, it's, it's very, very important that we, that we are early on discussing format, discussing standards, and also discussing availability so we can intercompare and, and collaborate and intercompare the actual data so that we know how well we actually match each other and also how can we help each other improve. So I think this is very much a two-way system for Swarm and MSS1. So we are welcoming a very good and close collaboration between Swarm and MSS1 uh, <clears throat> to really ensure this intercollaboration um, and also that we have a highly documented and, and um, data quality product for all. And also we are welcoming a good and stable and simple access to both Swarm and MSS data and services for the entire community. And this really goes, goes both ways. So I think we should spend some time now that first get the mission commissioned, <laughs> but then we should really focus on these things so that we can utilize, utilize it the best. I said it not as a joke because I mean it, when I looked out in the room earlier this week on this whole Swarm data quality community, I say Swarm is nothing without you. There are three boxes in space. It's because of the, the job that happens here between all these groups that makes these missions amazing. And we should, we should utilize the fact that we now have, have a big community and then hopefully a growing community also because of these new good missions that we've got. 
Okay, I will not to talk too much about Virus and VRE. Ashley in the room, is there want to ask questions about this? I'm just showing pretty pictures. Uh, but it's really a way to, to let users work on swarm data without having to know to having to do all the extra work. It's um it's an ecosystem where you can you know you can display data, you can manipulate data. We say Swiris for not only Swarm. We are highly welcoming all the data formats in there. And I think this is something to look at. We also have a virtual research environment attached to it. Uh, with Core, we have the Swarm Pal developed. So we have a code exchange, open source, everything. And this is really a way for the community to get together. So it would be good to also not just talk about exchanging data, but also utilizing common services for the communities. For the... So yeah, just with CSS, one other thing we do, I will, I will, I'm almost done. It's that in some cases we are also, of course, happy to host data uh, on our servers if that's of use. And, and for CSS in particular, for the high precision magnetometer level twos, we have a, a constantly updated uh, uh, a set of data coming in, and this is really to the benefit of all. Okay, so a little bit about the collaboration, and I will end in, in, in less than two minutes, I hope. Uh, there is collaboration already. Experts from the ESA-supported Swarm Disk are, have been helping in the, in the calib calibration and validation. Uh, these are some examples. I will let Dils will probably show these also, or something similar. So it's basically what we've heard. MSS 1 looks very good. Uh, at this at this early state, but this is really a collaboration also utilizing this warm consortium to do that. And a slide I hope that I could show today, but I cannot. Uh, a way forward to formalize the collaboration because the collaboration will happen between people in this room. But how do we how do we formalize it? And and there is a long going uh, collaboration between ESA and the Ministry of Science and Technology in China uh, that focus on exploitation on missions on both sides. And the Dragon 5 uh, Corporation just had the big workshop uh, in China where, where they're looking at the summer. It was extremely successful from what I hear from people. Uh, and also they are paving the way forward for Dragon 6. I was hoping to announce that there's no sign on both sides. We are very close to formalizing it. And there are very strong indications that in this Dragon 6 collaboration, there will be swarm. MSS1 collaboration. So this is really places this on a high level that both our agencies very much care uh, about that we can succeed together. So with that, I will end. Uh, and uh, a way to collaborate is always to meet. And I'm happy also to invite all of you next spring to Copenhagen to the Swarm 10 year anniversary and science meeting that we will host in April in Copenhagen. We have a web page that's open, and also there is where you can register and uh, and, um, uh, and and submit abstracts. So with that, we will end. Thank you very much, and hope to see you in Copenhagen.